Tevis Mark II anti-lock brake system first appeared on Buick Electra and Park Avenue models in the 1986 model year. The current Tevis Mark IV anti-lock brake system was introduced as standard equipment on the 1991 Park Avenue and optional on 1992 LeSabre. Since then, the system has been constantly evolving. For the 1992 model year, traction control was offered on Park Avenue models. With traction control, the electronic brake and traction control module, or EBTCM, uses the anti-lock brake pressure modulator valve to provide controlled braking to slipping drive wheels. This improves traction at speeds below 25 miles an hour. For traction control, the PMV is modified by the addition of two isolation valves and a pressure switch. These valves are so named because they isolate the front brake hydraulic circuits from the master cylinder and rear wheel circuits. For 1994, traction control is further enhanced. In addition to applying the front brakes, the ABS traction control module can improve traction by signaling the powertrain control module to reduce engine torque output. This is accomplished by retarding spark and cutting fuel to the engine cylinders. With this system, traction control is available at all speeds. A traction on-off switch is also added. This enables the driver to shut off traction control for the current ignition cycle. Hi, I'm Chuck McLennan. The know-how reference manual for this program lists the new part numbers corresponding to changes that have taken place in the Tevis ABS traction control module between the 1991 and 1994 model years. Previous know-how programs have covered the theory of ABS and traction control operation and general system diagnosis. However, in this video, we'll concentrate on sharing with you some specific information about diagnosing some of the more common conditions that can cause ABS or traction control complaints. This information was gathered by the folks at Buick Service and Flint Automotive Engineering. And to provide us with some of his experiences in real life situations, I'm pleased to welcome back to Know How Ian Doran from Buick Service in Flint. Hi, Ian. Welcome. Glad you could join us. Hi, Chuck. Glad to be here. You know, I've noticed that Buick Service manuals emphasize that performing a visual inspection is the first step in diagnosing an ABS or traction control complaint. Have you uh, found this to be important? Yes, very much so. Failure to check the details can really hurt you when you're trying to diagnose an ABS or traction control complaint. What happens is when you see a condition that seems familiar, it's easy to assume it's the same problem you've seen before. So you just jump right in and start fixing what you think is the cause? Exactly, and then you tend to overlook some of the diagnostic steps. Buick service people see it all the time when they go into dealerships to look at cars with ABS or traction control problems. I know that technicians sometimes resent it when a factory guy shows up and finds that the cause of the condition is something simple. It might be a loose wire or connector, maybe low battery voltage, or even the most often overlooked component, a fuse that's blown because of a wiring problem. Something as simple as checking a fuse first could save you a whole lot of time and money, and it only takes a few moments. When we go into a dealership, believe me, the last thing any of the Buick field people want to do is make technicians look bad. I know only too well how frustrating it can be to pinpoint something like an intermittent problem. I'd like to use this know-how to share some of our experiences and show you the most common causes of ABS and traction control malfunctions. We'll focus on the Tevis Mark IV system in 1991 through 94 Park Avenue and LeSabre's. You can use this information as a guide when you perform a visual inspection and also during more in-depth diagnosis. Speaking of diagnosis, Ian, uh, I'll go start checking out our test car. Okay, Chuck, I'll join you there shortly. One general observation we've made concerns newer cars with under 1,000 miles on the odometer. Most ABS or traction control problems on these low mileage vehicles can be attributed to the problems in the system wiring. 
When you're inspecting a newer car, check especially for wires that may be stretched too tightly between connections. Ideally, harnesses should be installed so that there is sufficient slack in the wiring to allow for stress relief as the car's chassis and body are flexed. Keep in mind that even though it has only a few miles on the odometer, a new car is often subjected to a lot of chassis movement and vibration as it is being shipped from the plant to the dealership. Movement and vibration during the delivery process can cause wires in an overly tight harness to pull loose or even rub through. The first indication of a problem in the ABS wiring harness often comes when the electronic brake or brake and traction control module sets a diagnostic trouble code and the anti-lock indicator lights. On vehicles with traction control, the traction off indicator will always light when a problem is detected with ABS. However, if there is a problem with traction control only, the ABS lamp will not light. Remember, the traction off lamp may illuminate due to normal conditions. Check the service manual for more details. When checking for diagnostic trouble codes during an ABS function check, it's very important that you use a Tech One scan tool equipped with the most recent mass storage cartridge. Don't use the ABS cartridges that were released earlier. Always make a note of any codes that are found during this initial check. These codes could turn out to be your only clue in the case of an intermittent problem that doesn't reoccur during your test. As with drivability conditions, anti-lock diagnostic trouble codes, or DTCs, may not always tell you the exact cause of a problem. But if you familiarize yourself with the conditions that cause them, the codes can usually give you a good idea of the parts of the system you should inspect. As you may recall, ABS traction trouble codes are grouped according to the general areas they apply to. For example, the 20 series codes apply to the front wheel speed sensor circuits. Regardless of which codes are set for a given wheel, it's advisable to do a thorough check of the entire circuit. 20 series codes are set when the controller detects a problem in one of the front wheel speed sensor circuits. More specifically, a code 21 or 25 sets when the controller detects a lack of continuity or electrical noise in the right or left front speed sensor circuits. The control module continuously monitors wheel sensor circuits for continuity or electrical noise. 20 series codes could be caused by an open in the front sensor circuit, or a short to ground, or a short may occur between the two front harness circuit wires. A good example of a short to ground causing a right front wheel sensor code is one that we've seen occurring on 92 and later Park Avenue Ultras equipped with 3800 supercharged engines. It's caused by the right front wheel speed sensor wiring rubbing against the power steering pulley. The contact causes the wire insulation to rub through and produces an intermittent short to ground as the exposed wire vibrates against the metal pulley. And then something interesting happens. This bare wire vibrating against the pulley while the engine is running can produce a false wheel speed signal to the control module. The controller may interpret this as a wheel speed signal and could produce false ABS or traction control cycling before a right front sensor code sets. If the controller is detecting this signal while you're using the Tech One, it may not be possible to enter ABS diagnostic mode while the engine is running. The reason is that diagnostic mode cannot be entered if any wheel speed is above 10 kilometers per hour. Another condition that can cause front sensor codes on Park Avenue and LeSabre models is an open at the wheel sensor connector at the hub. This may be the result of different pin heights in the connector. Pins can sometimes bend when the connector is pushed into place. Bent pins can also occur at the rear wheel speed sensor. However, this is a much less common condition. In fact, most bent pin problems are corrected at the assembly plant. The controller indicates problems at the rear wheel speed sensor by means of 30 series codes. Rear sensor codes indicate the control module has detected a lack of continuity due to an open circuit, a short circuit, or electrical noise in the rear wheel speed sensor circuits. 
One place in particular to check for an open is the four pin rear wheel sensor connector at the fuel tank pass through. Let me show you on a car. It's possible that the connector could be loosened during assembly when the gas tank is installed. Usually this condition will be found and corrected when the car is roll tested before leaving the plant. However, in some cases the connector may be seated just enough to make sufficient contact to pass the factory test, then it comes loose when the car is driven or shipped to the dealership. Another possible cause of rear sensor codes may be the rear wheel sensor itself. The plastic used to mold the gray colored sensors on 1991 and early 92 cars may become porous in high salt environments. This is especially true in areas where a lot of salt is used on the roads during the winter. Moisture entering through the porous plastic corrodes the sensor coil causing a steady or intermittent rear sensor code. In the case of an intermittent, a good way to check for moisture intrusion is to spray salt water on the sensor. Of course this method can be used anytime you suspect a sensor problem is due to moisture. As a rule, when you find problems relating to a rear sensor on a car equipped with the gray colored sensors, replace them with the black plastic sensors used on later models. One other thing that may lead to intermittent front or rear sensor codes is if the harness has come loose from the mounting brackets. This could allow the harness to rub through at the wheel or axle and cause faulty speed signals. Thoroughly examine the harness at the mounting brackets at each wheel. Now we'll move on with our codes. In general, the 40 and 50 series codes are intended to indicate conditions that relate to the pressure modulator valve assembly, or PMV. As I said earlier, new cars tend to display ABS symptoms that relate to the system wiring. We've seen a small number of cases where a pin is bent at the 14 pin connector. As a car ages, other factors that affect the ABS relays and internal PMV components come increasingly into play. Code 45 is one that occurs most often. Before we look at code 45, let's see how Chuck is doing with our test car. Well, Ian, uh, I did a visual check and found no obvious problems with the wiring or connectors. Fluid levels are okay in the PMV and master cylinder reservoirs with no apparent leaks. I checked the appropriate fuses and the fuse blocks in the instrument panel. They're all okay. The fuses under the hood also checked out okay. Then, following the electrical systems manual, I moved on to the functional check. When I hooked up the Tech 1 and entered the diagnostic mode, then I got some action. I found three diagnostic trouble codes are stored. Oh, and also, I noticed that the anti-lock and traction off lamps in the instrument panel remained lit after I performed my tests. Now you can see why I picked this to be our test car. <laughs> I guess. So, uh, what's our next step? Well, Chuck, the main reason I picked a test car with a Code 45 stored is because it covers a lot of territory. In fact, half the circuits in the anti-lock brake system can contribute to that one code. Wow. That could make the diagnosis kind of difficult. Exactly. So let's start by looking at the parameters the ABS controller uses to determine when code 45 should be set. When the ignition switch is turned to run, the control module receives battery voltage at pin 53. This signals the controller to pull in the main ABS relay and perform a diagnostic circuit check that lasts about two seconds. During this check, the controller looks for at least 9 volts from the main relay at pin 33 and pin 3. It also checks that battery voltage is reaching the PMV. A code 45 sets. If the control module does not read battery voltage from the main relay or the PMV. Mm -hmm. Now, when I looked in the electrical service manual, it said a code 45 sets if the control module detects an open or short to ground in the PMV left-hand inlet valve circuit. That's right. During initialization, the controller runs voltage checks on all of the PMV valves. Trouble code 45 will set 
if there is an open or short to ground in the left front inlet valve circuit. But the controller may also set code 45 if it detects a fault such as a short between a valve and the PMV case, which is grounded. Now let's look at a PMV. Let's go to the bench. By the way, this condition where the valve is shorting to the case is one that sometimes occurs when the system is hot. When the PMV has been operating, it's possible for this solder material here in the valve block to expand with temperature and touch the outer case. Then, if you test when the car is cold, it'll probably check out okay. And you won't find the fault. So in checking for intermittent shorts inside the PMV, you should always test the car after it has had sufficient time to fully warm up to operating temperature. Let the car idle for about 20 minutes, out of the wind, and then perform your checks. Another condition that may be difficult to pinpoint is a code 45 that is caused by an intermittent fault at the ABS main relay. On newer relays, the contacts can sometimes be contaminated by small particles of plastic from the relay case. And you say this tends to happen on newer cars? Right, Chuck. But I also mentioned earlier that relays can be affected by age. Let me show you. The seals on the relay weather pack connectors are coated with silicone lubricant for ease of assembly and sealing. Hmm. It's hard to see, but I can feel it okay. Yeah, what happens is over time, the silicon lubricant can migrate past the seal and onto the relay contacts. Where it acts like an insulator when the contacts try to close. Yep, you got it. Temperature changes appear to accelerate this silicone migration process, most likely by causing the weather seal to expand and contract. It's also possible for relay contacts to be contaminated by oxidation that occurs with age. This increases the contact resistance and in some cases may cause a code to set. Also, some intermittent problems may occur when the relay becomes hot. That's because relay pull-in voltages increase with temperature. Also remember that a car's entire electrical system is affected by age. And even though the difference may be slight, even a small voltage drop could affect a relay that's operating only marginally due to oxidation or contamination. And finally, one other condition we've seen cause a code 45 on 94 vehicles is a pinched wire at the ABS diode located by the park brake pedal. This pinch can cause the 30 amp maxi fuse to blow, leaving the main relay without battery voltage. Another thing that can cause a 40 or 50 series code to set is an intermittent open of a circuit trace inside the PMV. This is likely to occur only when the PMV is cold and the traces contract and pull away from each other. Once the PMV warms up, the traces expand and contact is restored. The other code you noted, Chuck, was 61, right? That's right, Ian. Code 61 is primarily associated with the PMV pump motor relay. In addition to particle contamination, another problem we've seen in 1992 and later cars is caused by high resistance in the main relay. On these models, the main relay and the pump relay are wired in series so that the pump battery voltage is supplied from the main relay. High resistance in the main relay could cause a voltage drop across the contacts. This voltage drop can prevent the valves or pump relay from actuating. Depending on where the controller is in its diagnostic routine, either a code 45 or 61 will set. Remember though, as I said earlier, this condition occurs only on 1992 and later models where the relays are wired in series. On our 1994 test car, codes 45 and 61 were corrected by replacing the ABS main relay. We'll discuss code 75 in a moment. Here are some other possible causes for a code 61. Check that the pump motor wiring is not being pinched at the AC vacuum canister. A pinch here can cause the 40 amp maxi fuse to blow. Check that the four pin harness connector at the pump motor isn't loose or that the pin terminals are not bent. Also, check for a good pump motor ground at the left front side rail. A code 61 can also be caused by a short at the pump motor run sensor. To check for this condition, measure resistance at the terminals of the PMV four pin connector. Also, a check for a short between the sensor and the case. The final series of codes are the 70 series codes. 
Code 71 indicates a problem within the controller. On 1992 and some early 93 vehicles, when the controller was mounted under the dash, a glitch in the traction control program sometimes caused a Code 71 to set intermittently at 10 kilometers per hour. A DLC or ALDL cover with a shorting bar was introduced as a service kit to correct this condition. On early 93 cars, this cover was installed at the assembly plant. A code 71 may occur if this cover is not replaced after a diagnostic procedure using the DLC. Check the know-how manual for more information. A code 74 can be the result of what we call a lazy PMV pressure switch. This condition is caused by solder flux contamination of the switch. This can cause the pressure switch to stick open for up to several minutes and disable traction control. A good clue for this condition is that it tends to occur when the car is cold. It also sets only with vehicle speed. Allow the vehicle to cool for several hours before continuing diagnosis of this code. When intermittent problems are suspected with either the relays or PMV, it is very important to check the vehicle when it is both hot and cold. Code 74 can also be caused by a failed or incorrectly adjusted brake switch. Check the service manual for proper adjustment procedures. On early 1994 vehicles, a code 75 or 76 may appear in the controller. These codes are the result of assembly plant processing and are not true codes. Clear and try to repeat these codes before continuing with your diagnosis. On our test car, code 75 could not be repeated after it was cleared, so no further action was necessary in the diagnosis of this code. Well, Ian, you uh, certainly weren't joking when you said checking the details is important when diagnosing ABS complaints. You've certainly showed us plenty of details today. Well, I hope so. And I hope you'll find the information useful in understanding ABS diagnostic trouble codes. Thanks, Ian. In an upcoming know-how, we'll cover in more detail the actual troubleshooting procedures for pinpointing the conditions that we've covered and others. So, until the next know-how, thanks for joining us. Good luck. Much of the preceding information was gathered from analysis of components returned from dealerships participating in the GM parts return program. This information is used to make continuous improvements to the design of our products. Buick Service greatly appreciates your continued participation in the GM Parts Return Program.